1.9 million men, women, and children are victims of human trafficking. But do you know what human trafficking actually is? In a small sleepy town, people are dreaming. But not everyone's dreams will come true. Human traffickers prey on people's dreams and lure them away for their own benefit. How do they do this? Human trafficking doesn't happen all of a sudden. It's a process. First, traffickers act. This includes recruiting victims, transporting them to the place where they'll be exploited, hiding them from authorities, and receiving victims from other traffickers. So why don't the victims run away or say no? Because traffickers use different means. This includes threatening or forcing victims to do what they want, abducting or deceiving the victims and abusing power. Sometimes traffickers promise small payments or benefits to get the victim to cooperate. And why are the traffickers doing this? The purpose of trafficking is exploitation. Traffickers take advantage of victims for their own profit or benefit. This is human trafficking. This man's neighbor tells him that he has a great job for him on a very safe construction site and that he'll be paid money. With more money, he can make his dreams come true. He agrees to take the job. A few days later, the neighbor's friend picks him up and they drive to the construction site. It's a very long way from his home. This man is put to work immediately without any training or protective equipment, without enough to eat or drink and with very few breaks. After many months, he's only been paid a fraction of what he was promised. He knows he's been tricked, but he doesn't have enough money to get home. This man is a victim of human trafficking. He was recruited by his neighbor and tricked into thinking he was going to work at a safe construction site for fair pay. Instead, he was forced to work long hours in unsafe conditions for almost no money while others benefited from his exploitation. One day while looking for jobs online, this woman comes across an opportunity to work in a restaurant in a big city. Her application is successful and her new employer arranges for her travel there. She is met at the airport and driven to a part of the city that looks nothing like she expected. The car pulls up to a building. The door is shut and locked behind her. She is made to perform sex acts against her will. She is trapped. This woman is a victim of human trafficking. She was transported by a trafficker from the airport to the location of the job. When she arrived at the location and realized it was not the restaurant job she was expecting, the traffickers used force to keep her there. She was then exploited for forced sex work. This 14-year-old boy on school break is approached on the street by a woman who looks trustworthy. She tells him that she needs workers at her factory, and she promises him lots of money. He brings her to meet his parents. They are so happy for him. He'll now be able to save money for school. The woman drives him to the next town. They pull up to an old building. There is someone waiting for him. As he is led inside, the nice lady drives off. The factory isn't anything like she described. There are lots of people working, including many children. He works all day, and after just a few hours of sleep, he starts again. He is sad. This isn't what he expected. He misses his family. After weeks, he still hasn't received any salary or been allowed to contact them. He is trapped. This boy is a victim of human trafficking. He was tricked by the woman who recruited him on the street. He was then received by a trafficker when he arrived at the factory and exploited by being forced to sew clothing. For anyone under the age of 18, only the act and purpose matter for it to legally be a case of human trafficking. Understanding that human trafficking doesn't happen all at once, but instead is a process of act, means and purpose 
helps us better identify victims and trafficking trends. People everywhere are dreaming and looking for opportunities to make those dreams come true. Human trafficking is happening all around us. Will you recognize it when you see it? Human trafficking must end. It's another term for slavery. Human trafficking uses force, violence, coercion, or fraud to exploit people all over It's the world. Term the numbers are hard to imagine. More than 20 million people around the world are victims of forced labor. Five and a half million of them children, but even one is too many. It's another term. Human trafficking takes place on the internet and on the streets. It's in remote places and around the corner. It's in plain view and behind It's closed doors. If you see something suspicious, don't ignore it. Report it. To get help or to report a tip, call the National Human Trafficking Resource Center hotline. 1-888-373-7888 or text be free at 233-7333. Human trafficking is another term for slavery. Hi, this is Carlene Davis, and you're listening to Noel and Beverly Martin. Now, don't you touch that dial. We're praising God all the time. Yeah, Jesus says so. Welcome to the Talk Up Radio Show. Happy Father's Day to every father out there, everyone who plays the role of a father, Everyone who is a father in a child's life and doing an awesome job. Being a father is not easy, I can tell you that. Having been and still is one, you never know what may take off that child or what, <laughs> you know, you just never know. But our topic today is one that will also be involving fathers. You know, um, we have in our studios, I'm trying to find your mics, I can't see the colors that they're on. I'm four. Uh, blue. You're blue. Can you hear me? I'm you're four. You're blue. And who is, what color is, um, I think it's yellow. I don't know. Say something, Maurice. Hey. Yay. All hey. right. I'm not Good. colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> who says men are colorblind? <laughs> men are not colorblind. Well, anyway. Okay, um, here we go. So what, what we're going to do, we're going to open up um, the human trafficking section, which we're going to be doing once a month yeah. on the third uh, week of the month. And um, in our studios, I was saying, is Ms. John Edwards, CEO of Paving the Way. And um, I, am I uh, correct in saying Deputy Sheriff? Yes. Okay, Deputy. All right. <laughs> Deputy <laughs> Sheriff. We'll Deputy Maurice Sheriff. Maurice Edwards. Yeah. They, they look different when they don't wear the uniform. I know, right? <laughs> he's all dazzled up. Look, look at his snappy outfit. You got to get a little closer, Mo. Yeah. Come on, snuggle up. See, look, he's got the little thing. So, and the, I'll, yeah. try to, I'll try to clean up. Yeah, he's yeah, all, yeah, he's yeah. all dressed all snappy. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Beverly. Um, put her on the spot. She's a mother, so she have to tell me Happy Father's Day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she, she does. You know, and surprise me, too. <laughs> yes. Um, in the last yeah. 50 minutes or so of the show, we're going to open the, f the studio lines up for fathers to call in or children to call in Absolutely. Um, and say hello, anyone to call in. And the, the male who played a role in your life, father, the word father, um, God the Father, you know, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, but God the Father. Father is provider, protector, and giver of love. Anyway, let me not go off on that. We have only 60 minutes to get this done. <laughs> <laughs> we do, no, you know, we do. When you guys hear me go silent, you know I'm getting emotional. So it's time to take over, Miss Martin. Yes. Yes, welcome Hello. to the Talk It Up radio show. So good to have you join us today. Um, as Noel said, we're continuing the series on, um, well, it's not a series. We're continuing in our fight to end this horrific crime, human trafficking. But I first want to say Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there, especially to my darling husband, yes, who's yes. been a fantastic father to um, our daughter and um, all the other children. We have a lot of children together. We're a blended family, so <laughs> um, that comes with its challenges, but he's a fantastic father, and we're so blessed to have him. So thank you, honey. Happy Father's Day. Yeah. Thank you, darling. <laughs> Happy it's Father's also Day, his Noel. birthday tomorrow. Ooh, so he another gets Gemini. to celebrate uh, double, double blessings. It's awesome. Yes. And you guys can't see Beverly. She's behind the camera. And I can, you know, there's, there's Mo and there's me. Yeah. 
That's all right. You can see me after on YouTube. Exactly. We're streaming live on our YouTube channel. And um, we also have um, on the Talk It Up, Talk It Up Radio Show dot com website. You can catch us on the stream there, too. So um, we have in the studio, as Noel said, Jan Edwards, the CEO of Paving the Way. And we also have uh, Maurice. Um, did I say Jen? You said we had the same last name. Yeah, I was like, I'm not seeing right. People are like, are you related? <laughs> I said, absolutely. We're from the Edwards family. We're from the Edwards clan. Yes. <laughs> and I just want to introduce Maurice to you. Maurice hey, T. Man. Edwards. There's He's Mo. an investigator. Yep, there's Mo. He's been employed with the Seminole County there's Sheriff's Office in Seminole County since 2006. So he's assigned to the Youth Intervention Services Unit. His responsibilities include the investigation of missing juveniles and human trafficking cases. Investi investigator Edwards is also a task force officer with the FBI, assigned to the Innocent Images Task Force for Human Trafficking Cases. He works with local, state, and federal agencies in pursuit of the most comprehensive response and investigation to the crime of human trafficking. He was the lead investigator in the first human trafficking case he investigated. He tried and successfully pros prosecuted um, in Seminole County. This case was a major success in Seminole, both for the law enforcement and the prosecutor's office. For the past year, Investigator Edwards has assumed the position as the chairman for the Seminole County Human Trafficking Task Force. He leads the task force in connecting law enforcement, prosecutors, and various agencies and organizations in working together to recognize human trafficking and respond effectively. The task force also provides a wide range of services to victims of human trafficking. Investigator Edwards routinely travels throughout Seminole and Orange County to educate and provide resources to law enforcement and civilians in order to combat human trafficking. That is awesome. We thank you so much for all that you do. It's impressive. Yes. Yeah. Do, when they, when okay. they read your bio, do you go like, wow, that sounds like a really great guy. Oh, uh, that's me. I, I do it yes. every single time. I'm like, yes. is that me? I'm talking about somebody else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So welcome to the show, and, and good job that we did get that first case mm -hmm. prosecuted. We need to have more forceful um, things to get these criminals out. So let's begin. How yeah, do so Mo, I, I downloaded and, and printed out a press release uh, yesterday. I don't know if you guys saw it on my Facebook page, but the DOJ sent a press release out on the day after my birthday that they arrested 2,300 people. Wow. And it was part of that same um, case that, you know, the, the most I saw in the news, because we were talking about the Operation Innocence, mm -hmm. was in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Right. That was 160 children were rescued and 300 people. And it was just crazy. So can you walk us through, like, first of all, 2,300 people, what does that take to round that number of people up in a, in a, you know, over a period of time? And then how can we as citizens, you know, neighbors in the community really make a difference and partner with you guys to make sure that when we see something, we know exactly what to do? Well, it takes, um, it's not only the, um, the law enforcement aspect, but the community as well had a lot to do with it. Uh, the education, the, the reach out that we do with the community, uh, having them join the task force, right? Um, Non-government agencies joining our task force, not just law enforcement, but just regular civilians who want to do something, who join these task forces. They also have a lot of information to share. And um, by them sharing information and being out there on the streets, they also contribute to the, um, you know, to the rest, you know, to the outcome that we had. Yeah. Uh, in Atlanta, um, Atlanta is like a hub. So um, we, we all know Atlanta is the biggest airport we have. Yes. Right? Okay. And so everything passed through Atlanta. Uh, usually the um, the layovers is from Atlanta, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of our traffickers who are being transported and moved around, are um, they the, um, they end up in Atlanta. Or they travel through Atlanta. Uh, so one of the things were that um, a lot of the the uh, traffickers understand that, 
Uh, they're not dumb people. They're not ignorant people. They are educated to a certain extent on knowing what they do, right? So uh, you just don't take a girl out of nowhere and just traffic her, right? Mm -hmm. um, you have to have a, a knowledge and experience, and you have to um, educate yourself on how to manipulate these young women. And um, they master that. And by doing that, they um, take these girls and they traffic them. They, you know, they take them from being an instant girl, you know, in some cases, and they take them from being an instant girl to where they are now, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to be, you know, to traffic them. And so Atlanta is, is, is one of the hubs, if that, that make any sense to mm -hmm. you. Sure does. Right. Yeah. Sure so it's does. one of the hubs where, where a lot of the girls and, and the traffickers meet. Um, and they have a wonderful, wonderful, I met several of the uh, investigators there um, in a recent conference, and, and they do a tremendous job on combating human trafficking. They dedicate their, uh, uh, they, the entire task force just for that. How big is their team? How big is their task force? Oh, I met, um, I met six guys. Wow. Um, uh, but uh, that was for, um, uh, um, That operation? Yeah, for, for that particular operation, but throughout the whole Georgia, um, throughout the state, they have uh, various other t small task forces. Wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And how many do we have, how many task forces do we have here in uh, Central Florida? Uh, in Central Florida, we have, uh, I believe we have approximately about four task forces. We have uh, um, Seminole County Task Force. We have Greater Orlando Human Trafficking Task Force. We have Polk County Task Force. We have Space County um, Task Force that I know of. And, they all, and you guys area. all work really closely together, right? Oh, yeah. So we like on a one big umbrella. So we fall right up under the Great Orlando Human Trafficking Task Force. Um, and we also have um, the uh, I-4 Corridor Task Force. Mm -hmm. And the I-4 Corridor Task Force consists of all those task forces I mentioned, though. Mm -hmm. And we meet quarterly to discuss um, ways to combat human trafficking. Wow. So I want a little background from you. Like, you know, because mm -hmm. I... All, all y'all know, they're watching on Facebook, you know my story. Ethiopia saw some just horrific things and not okay with it, and then God laid that on my heart, and here I am, right? That doesn't, that's not everybody's story. You've been in law enforcement for a little while. Like, what was it? Like, did you just get promoted into human trafficking? Did you, like, say, no, I want to take on these cases? How did all this uh, arise for you? That's an interesting story. So we started off working just do, um, juvenile cases. So while working juvenile cases, we uh, we took over all the missing kids in um, Seminole County. Uh, our, our primary job was doing juvenile probation, and then from there we, we, we transitioned over to working all the missing juveniles in Seminole County. And while working juveniles in Seminole County, we um, had one particular missing juvenile where we saw a correlation between them. So we saw uh, various juveniles, uh, female juveniles, that was being missing, and we were locating them at various places. Mm -hmm with traffickers usually um, traffic these women, um, buy and sell these women at, which is hotels and what they call the trap house, which is abandoned houses or tra or houses where they um, sell drugs at, sell women out of, is known as a trap house. So we, we discovered and located uh, our missing juveniles out of these locations. And when we recovered them, that's when we started initiating an investigation uh, where the juveniles were disclosing that um, they were being sold. Uh, they were um, a part of usually uh, gangs, and they were like, yeah, you know, part of the gang member, my job is to prostitute. Um, and they were receiving money and goods out of it. And from there we saw a, a, um, a combination of uh, these missing juveniles mm -hmm. and their involvement in the prostitution and being bought and sold. And um, our, initial, our, our, our initial first investigation came out of that. And we worked with, close with Orange County and uh, Volusia and in our surrounding counties. Um, how, how many cases have you gone after? Like, have you worked on? Oh, all right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me okay. get my fingers and my toes. <laughs> well, well, uh, so, okay, so, um, okay, so human trafficking um, investigations are, uh, uh, a lot of people feel that uh, if you take just a missing juvenile, okay, mm -hmm. or you take a girl who was involved in, in commercial sex, mm -hmm. um, that in itself is not human trafficking, right? If you have a, a, a juvenile, um, someone who's 17 and um, younger, who is involved in commercial sex on their own, so they're prostituting, mm -hmm. that's not human trafficking because she's just doing it on her own, correct? So she's just prostituting. She's not managed by anybody. She's not being bought and sold. I'm sorry, she's not being sold by anybody else. Right. So she's facilitating these acts on her own, mm -hmm. okay? 
So we get calls like that a lot. So we get calls where we have to investigate every crime that come in saying, hey, this juvenile is involved in commercial sex. Mm -hmm. And then when we investigate it, we come to find out, well, um, this particular incident, we know um, she's not involved. Um, she should not been um, um, traffic. She not been traffic. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so what we do is, uh, so we say how many cases we get, we get them in daily. Oh, boy. Right. Uh, wow. Many, so you have to wow. break it down and see which one is actually yeah. falls in that category. And cat. Lindsay, yeah. Lindsay has a question. Lindsay, thanks for, thanks for asking a question. Yeah. It's a great one. So how were you able to connect with the girls to get them to open up about being trafficked? That's such a great. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, that's um, such a, because, you know, uh, the, what, what I've seen and what I've experienced is they don't want to talk to anybody about anything. They're, you know, yep. tough girls and all of that. So how did you get them to open up? What we noticed was when we uh, first started working human trafficking cases, we um, um, we noticed right at hand that we have to build a relationship with these mm -hmm. um, young ladies. Like, you have to build a rapport because they, they, have, really to trust they have to trust you first of all because there will yeah. be a big trust issue right there. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Like, they don't trust law enforcement. No. You know, no one. Well, you know, they're trained to not, to not trust, trust law enforcement, right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. So the traffic can tell them, listen, uh, law enforcement don't care about you. No one looking for you. You've been mm -hmm. missing for how long? They don't mm -hmm. care about you. Right. Like, I've been buying and, uh, so it's and I've been brain selling you for this, you know, so for this amount of time. brainwashing. But, mm -hmm. Oh, definitely, That yes. happens ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So by the time you get them, it's like a stone cold mm -hmm. wall. Yes, yes. So what are some so, of the things that you do to break through that wall? So we learned... Um, well, the first step was we don't come as law enforcement. Like, I don't show up with, um, you know, right. I show up you with You show up like this. <laughs> yeah. Well, not even, like, you know, this can be a little intimidating as well. You know, a suit and a tie. They don't yeah. want to see that, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I use, you know, we wear, like, jeans and a T-shirt. Right. You know, we don't have our badge and guns. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, I'm the police. We come and hang out with them and just talk with them, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, one of the key components is not just, you know, what we do, law enforcement, but our victim specialists, our victim advocates. Um, when I get a call, my next call is to them. Mm -hmm. It's not to my supervisor. It's not to my partners at work, right? Mm -hmm. I call and say, listen, um, I got this call out with this um, girl. Can you come out with me? Mm -hmm. Because um, the, v the victim specialists, when they come out with us, um, they always come out with us because they, uh, they assist us with building that rapport and that right. relationship. Right. So they can focus on being there with her and, and um, helping out with her needs while I'm speaking with her and I'm, uh, I'm talking with her and building that um working on a criminal investigation part, right? right? Mm -hmm. While the victim advocate is working on the other needs that she may have. Mm -hmm. And one of the other key components is always keeping your word. I'm, I'm, it's the most important yes. thing with this yes. investigation. Mm -hmm. If I say I'm going to do something, you have to I, do I, I make you sure have I follow, to follow through. through. Yeah. You got to yeah. keep yeah. your word. Yeah. yeah, well, I think that applies for just about anybody, but yeah. in particular, because trust is yeah. a big issue. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. It's, it's, with it's, it's with huge. victim survivor warriors, it's, yeah. it's you yes. know, building that trust and honoring I, your word. I yeah, wanted, don't lie I, to I wanted, Yes, I wanted to ask you, what are some of the manipulation tactics that they use to get these young girls to be, is it just to girls believe or them. Girls and boys? Oh, girls! I'm sorry. We always say girls. Yeah, we do. Yeah, girls and boys, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. Um, but these young, young juveniles. Young, what yeah. What are some of the things that they would tell them? I mean, when I when I watch Jan's um, documentary, some of these children that are involved in this are from good homes. Mm -hmm. They're not. Runaways. Nope. They're not. Um, they there's have not, parents. There's not poverty stricken. Right. They, they have they parents have who all, love and care for them. All the mm -hmm. care that they, right. they, yeah that yep. and the, um it's not like it's where they have to go work. Yeah. Right. There's no socioeconomic yeah, there's demographic yeah. geographic boundary. Yeah. There. So, are, so, so there is, yeah. is this where then it may have been an emotional problem at home? Yeah. What do the perpetrators? That, what yeah, do they? Yeah. Look how for? do they? I mean, I know John said they look at your Facebook profile mm -hmm. and see what you mm -hmm. talk about and stuff. And so um, my, 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 my question is two part also. When you, when you go um, out um, and you're a, you're a male and it's a female, do you find it harder to get trust? Um, considering that Okay, hang on, hang on. Female. Beverly <laughs> had a question. <laughs> hang on, no. Yeah. Hang on a second. <laughs> Beverly <laughs> had a question. She well, really wants what, to what. know what they're looking for. Yeah, and let 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 we'll me, come back from the break. Let me it take sounds a quick, like yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hang on. Did. WOKB 1680 and WOKBradio.com. Imagine this tender goat meat swimming in savory curry. Mouth-watering jerk chicken smoked in spices smothered in a tangy homemade sauce. Oh, no hungry yet? 
Then come savor the flavor at B&T Jamaican Jerk Restaurant located at the Good Homes Plaza. Curry goat, oxtail, tripe and beans, express and lunch specials, and much more. Visit B&T Jamaican Jerk Restaurant on Facebook or call us at 407-440-4694. Hi, this is Carleen Davis, and guess what? Come August 25, I will be sharing with you on Gospel Explosion 2018 alongside Jabez, Adrian Cunningham, Sister Arlene, Hugh Brown, Stacey Wilson, and of course, I will be sharing my brand new album with you, so you can't afford to miss this one. We'll be at Fresh Oil Ministry, 8301 Silver Star Road, right here in Orlando. Please be there. Gates open at 6 p.m. Ministry starts at 7 p.m. Tickets available at Caribbean Sunshine Bakery, Negril's, Caribbean One Stop, Clarendon Restaurant. For more information, call 407-522-9990. Oh, you've got to be there. This is Kylie David. See you there. August 25, Gospel Explosion 2018. Hey, it's your girl Abigail Hamilton, and you're listening to Noel and Beverly on the Talk It Up Radio Show. Keep it locked. Welcome back to the Talk It Up Radio Show. And as you can see, we, our 60 minutes is just too short. Um, it's Father's Day, so we have to give some um, section of our show to the Father's Day. Um, the Father's out there, and we're going to let you know when to call in. Um, I had a bunch of questions. Uh, but I shoot. Would I, I have, one, have everybody? Your right wife there. had one first. I know. Okay, <laughs> ladies first. But I thought it's Father's Day, so I could. <laughs> nice tomorrow. try, no. Nice try. <laughs> nice try. It's it's not Father's Day. Okay. Yet. Uh, guys, I'm outnumbered inside here. Help. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> All right. So what what do the perpetrators say to manipulate these kids to get them to do what they want? They um. Do? Every circumstance is different, right? Yeah. So they. Uh, they know, um, we were saying at the beginning how they're not like complete idiots, mm -hmm. right? They mm -hmm. study on these girls, yeah. they study the whole system, mm -hmm. and they find out their weakness. Um, every one of the particular ones that are being trafficked have a weakness, mm -hmm. and they feed off of it. For example, someone with a broken home, okay? Mm -hmm. They just know how to attack them with needs they may have. If you want, or, or you, if you're into the glamorous life, if, if you know, if you lack a Michael Kors purse or jewelry, mm -hmm. or and if you lack um, finances or um, clothing that you know young ladies may like, they uh, um, they notice that, mm -hmm. and, and they you know they feed into it, mm -hmm. right? So they um, offer to purchase them things. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, so they offer to purchase them right. um, gifts and mm -hmm. the luxury stuff, right? Um, and what I have noticed through my investigation that a lot of girls have that attracted them and which initiated mm -hmm. from that step to where they are now, getting the material yes. stuff. That, yes, yeah. one particular girl. Uh, um, she wanted that type of stuff, right? He was mm -hmm. like, hey, I can get you this Michael Kors purse. She's like, okay, well, uh, you know, my parents can't afford that. Well, you know, I, so he'll buy her that. And then mm -hmm. from that, he'll buy her other things. He'll mm -hmm. take her out. He'll buy her clothes and shoes. Mm -hmm. And then what he did was, he said, okay, now we need to keep that up. I need you to do this. Wow. Um, they want to have sex with them. Over what period of time did that happen? Right, because I'm well, sure. In her particular I'm, case, it, yeah. it, it only occurred within three months. Wow. Within Ooh, three we. months in that particular case with three months. Wow. Yeah. So when, they, when they're targeting these juveniles, is it a case where they're watching them over a period of time? They're trying to figure out like how, they how, they this, how this they find them? This happened with social media, mm -hmm. the mall. They, they have um, teens their age mm -hmm. introducing to them. This happened within a short period, within wow. weeks. Of them doing it now, the uh, ones who who are who don't have a broken home, mm -hmm. ones who d does not have a broken home, mm -hmm. um, they feed off other things they lack, like you know attention from parents. Right, uh, mm -hmm. your parents working all the time. Yep, yeah. exactly. Absolutely. One of my cases where this guy got forty five years in fed time, you know, for um, selling this one girl, mm -hmm. and um, he got forty five years for that, but she. Um, and she was forced into it mm -hmm. as well, and um, she ended up. Um, uh, she had both parents in the household, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they both were uh, attentive to her. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't like anything, and um, she had a great household. Mm -hmm. However, this guy um, gave her what this uh, what this entertainment life. Um, 
portrayed. Like some excitement. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So, you're so, living a boring her, life. Come mm-hmm. live an exciting life with yeah, me so kind of I, thing. Yeah, exactly. So, when I asked yeah. her, like, what happened, you know, over time, you know, and she's like, well, it's just because, um, you know, uh, that, you know, that, that hip-hop lifestyle. You know, she thought that was pretty oh, cool because wow. she never, you know, so she thought that she would get what she saw on TV. Mm-hmm. And um, and that wasn't the case. Yes. Th- that was not the case. Yeah, no, not the case at all. And yeah. I think that's the thing, too, that um, I'm going to slide my little camera right back here for a second. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the two thing, too, that we talk about with parents is, you know, you can provide the great home. You can provide the attention. You can provide all of that. Mm-hmm. But if you're not really in tune to what your kids want, need, like, love, mm-hmm. their interest is that they can easily be lured away Mm -hmm. because if you're not in tune as a parent you you know you you got no shot and and i think that's one of the things today of you know parents i'm I'm not a fan of helicopter parents but to be able to connect with understand and know what your child loves Mm -hmm. and and do things that they want to do not necessarily what you want to do mm-hmm. and 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 you connect in that way you're actually going to start to figure out when you're that there's something off with your kids right yeah right and what was your yeah, question all right no mm-hmm. we're, we're we're turning it over to you now and hi tomas thanks yeah. for hopping on yeah, and I'm, Lindsay, I'm, we'll get to your question i promise i'm, I'm gonna pause because i forgot my question <laughs> <laughs> well you said something about going out to the club you said you know is it weird for you to be like out and not notice things and i want you to talk about your story to the Dominican Republic because I don't know if Katie's still watching but he went on vacation to the Dominican Republic and yeah. you've got some crazy stories yes, um, from there and and we and you know this is a Caribbean based radio Caribbean, station yeah, I think yeah. it's a very relevant yeah, conversation our, our to have yeah, 99%. well uh, um, those of us who work human trafficking our investigators who work human trafficking we're very passionate about it uh, mm-hmm. so we don't work it just as like another case right, right. we work it because we act, you know we care mm-hmm. we, you know, we truly care about the mm-hmm. victims and we care about getting these bad guys off the street mm-hmm. yep. so um, I was on vacation with the guys my brother and cousins and mm-hmm. friends and we were on vacation having a guy get together and uh, we, were in, and we were in Dominican Republic and uh, we were approached by um, this guy who wanted to sell us a child yeah. and um, uh, he uh, um, did he know who he, he was talking to? Well, no. So he started, off, <laughs> he started. He started off. Um, he started off with adults. He's like, you know what? Um, I can get you a 16 year old girl too. You know, and then that's when I just almost lost it. Mm. You know, I lost it on him, and and I threatened to report him, and it, it, it was just very, um, very uncomfortable for mm-hmm. me. And then we also had the incident where there were women who were um, who were approaching us and trying to sell themselves. And listen, you know, um, so. <laughs> Me doing what I do, right? Uh, <laughs> I was um, uh, speaking with them, trying to find out why they're doing it mm-hmm. and, and, and what circumstances pushed them to do it, right? Mm-hmm. And they're like, well, you know, I want to hear that. You know, like, well, I want to hear this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But some of them listened to me, you know, and mm-hmm. um, a lot of them came to, you know, to the fact that, listen, um, I'm from Venezuela and my family have nothing. Mm-hmm. And I make, you know, I'm making well between $1,000 a day doing this and I send money back home. Mm-hmm. Uh, no one forced me to do it. And, um, but, uh, they said, within that circumstances, that's why he did it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, that pretty much everything. Yeah, well, and the other thing, too, that you shared was women are actually sending their, like, they're sending their pictures to him, right? You, were, oh, you yes. said that, you said yes. that it's, so, it's like women yeah. know, women, hang on, I'm going to come around mm-hmm. here. Women know this is happening. Mm-hmm. They know this is an easy way to, quote, unquote, make money, mm-hmm. right? And so they're actually sending pictures of themselves to these guys that sell women, yeah, what I noticed that um, that trend um, come right into the states. So uh, what we have noticed that a lot of women here um, who have done that in those countries, they pick up that same uh, um, same trend here. So they try to um, manipulate that type of scene, or you know, here within the states. Mm-hmm. So they send their pictures to like if there's a known pimp. Yeah. And they hear about him. They'll send their pictures to him, yeah. trying to get him to pick them up, kind of like yeah, exactly. an agency, like a modeling agency. Yeah. So I called him a pimp. So when I was over there, I was like, "No, he's a pimp." Like, he's pimp. no, he's not a pimp. He's helping us out. I was like, "No, he's a, he's a pimp." Yeah, no, he's a pimp. Mm-hmm. He's helping you out. So that was my kind of what vacation. What is that? Is that human trafficking? Um, they're all adults, so yeah, no, no, that particular incident was not, not human right, trafficking. Right. No. No, well, not. what about um, when they're online and they're soliciting kids online? Yeah, like using social media to go after these kids. Right, or, or chat rooms. They're in mm-hmm. chat rooms. They they use video. Okay, so that's a good one because yeah. um, cause our second 
case. No, I think our first case in Seminole County that, that Lisa had. So the, the great Lisa Hava, who yep. I would say. The amazing Lisa Hava. The amazing Lisa Hava. Um, she was our uh, prosecutor for our first human trafficking case in Seminole County. Mm-hmm. And she... And that uh, was when? What year was that? that this was uh, 20... I want to say 2015. Okay. 2015. Mm-hmm. And she... Uh, she did an amazing job. So she went after this guy, mm-hmm. and, and he reached out to his victim, um, and he tried to recruit her online. So he reached out to her online on Facebook, said, hey, you got the looks. She's like, looks for what? Well, you know, looks to make money. You um, you got the body to make money. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, hey, um, you know, I'm a pimp. This wow. is what I do. Wow. So he, he blatantly looks. told her wow. who he was. Yes, exactly. Yeah. He's, o- he's overly confident and cocky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So... Um, uh, um, so he said, um, this is one of my girls. This is how she looked. This is how she make money. So he recruited her from Facebook. Wow. And um, so what happened was uh, we ended up getting him. And uh, he didn't pimp her out, but he rec- so we got him for recruiting, which fall under the statute. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so we got him for recruiting, just trying to recruit, and he got 10 years. Mm-hmm. So when they told Lisa that wow. she couldn't even get him for that, she, you know, she did. The verdict came back less than 15 minutes. Wow. It was good, an amazing good, case. Good. Awesome. Yeah, so Lindsay, we, uh, I'm so glad. Lindsay, Thanks for like listening and asking these great questions. So Lindsay asks, as adults, when would it constitute is human trafficking? Uh, forced fraud or coercion. So, so our adult case in Seminole County, um, this particular um, pimp, um, he uh, locked this girl in the room. Um, he beat his victims. Wow. Uh, he had over six victims, and he beat them. He locked them in the room. He fed them drugs. Mm. Um, he uh, threw made threats. He broke one girl arm. Um, he left permanent marks on their back. He whipped the girl with a whip, wow. uh, and um, and all of this is for control. It's for control, yes. So uh, power and control. Um, while having the power and control, he was um, selling them uh, to um, different um, um, buyers. These buyers were, were it's like one stop shop. Mm-hmm. These buyers would come to this house. They buy uh, they buy their drugs and they buy a woman and then they leave, and then he would feed the girls drugs. Wow. So, you know, I want to I want to address something that you just said, drugs, right? Because there are so many people that make an assertion, hey Bob, there are so many people that make an assertion that girls prostitute for drugs. And I'm like, hang on, hang on, that's not how it goes. Mm-hmm. Because I can't tell you how many people have, well, they're just doing that to feed their drug habit. And I'm like, nope, that's, that's not the case. Good. So, um, why don't you explain mm-hmm. how all that happens so we can really educate the public about how they utilize drugs to manipulate these girls. So um, the one uh, particular, I had a 15-year-old juvenile victim, and she and uh, she didn't do any drugs. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, well, she did marijuana. She tried marijuana once. Mm-hmm. But the trafficker, once he started um, trafficking out, um, let me go back, prior to him trafficking out, he mm-hmm. fed her. The um, stuff. Yes, mm-hmm. he fed her a drug, mm-hmm. and she got addicted to it. But she also passed out from it, and then she was raped. Wow. And then when he, he recorded it, and when she woke up, he told her, um, see what you did? Like, you already do it anyway, so now we got to make money. And then he also kept feeding her that particular drug. Mm-hmm. And um, and so, of course, she got hooked on that drug because of what he contributed to it. Mm-hmm. And that's a totally misconception of it. Uh, yeah. That's you know, right. Uh, um, I, I know plenty of uh, survivors and victims who are not um, drug addicts. Yeah. Uh, you know, no one wake up and say they want to do this. No. Well, and the other thing, too, that I want to point out is this level of trauma is beyond anything any of us can imagine. Mm. And the other thing, too, that I've, I've heard, read, had conversations about is, you know, there's only so much trauma the brain can handle mm-hmm. right now today mm-hmm. you know even when people see a car accident or whatever they yes. there's trauma to the brain there's you know people suffer from ptsd from a variety of of, of you know even people that witness 911 mm-hmm. they actually suffer from ptsd so um there's also that that thought of i can't take that anymore because a girl is raped on an average of what 25 35 40 times a night a night, yeah. Yeah. So your brain's only going to be able to handle mm. so much of that. So, mm. yeah, I'll take a drug because yeah. I don't want to be present to whatever is happening to me. Yeah. So when we. Um, That's really sad. I, yeah, you know, so it really doing, breaks my heart. Yeah. yeah. Doing, you know, doing court, doing a jury, doing trial, we explain to the jury listen, you know, these, you know, children, these victims, these adult mm-hmm. victims, they're raped between 15 and 25 a day, you know, a day. Mm. Um, you know, not just rape one time. There's right. rape between 15 and 20 pounds a day. Mm-hmm. And so, yes, yeah, a lot of them go to drugs and alcohol to mm-hmm. uh, numb the pain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, 
So I would love to see stiffer penalties, like maybe a lifetime sentence. Yeah. What is, what are the current penalties? What are the current penalties for child trafficking? And then what are the penalties for adult human trafficking? Uh, it, 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 it fall on a really, you know, the same, which I don't think it's, um, do they still have castration? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say what Noel said. <laughs> Um, so they actually have, have chemical castration. Okay, okay. They have okay, chemical cra- okay. castration. Those yeah, seem appropriate. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but you know, the guys yeah, still I find know. other means that you yeah. know. Um, so you have uh, uh, the adult vi- victims. So we just had one where um, he was sentenced to 15 years, uh, you know, for a juvenile. So it depends on that's, that's the acts that it occurred. No, yeah, it's not. It's nothing. a life felon. Mm-hmm. But um, we also had one that just uh, um, they just pled from where. They were trafficking a 14-year-old girl, and she died in result of the trafficking. Oh, God. Um, so they fed mm-hmm. her drugs. Mm-hmm. You know, they pumped drugs in her, and she ended up um, overdosing. Mm-hmm. And uh, when she overdosed, uh, uh, they were able to charge them with, um, you know, with the murder of the child. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because, because of the human trafficking aspect of yes. it. Yes. Um, yeah, so I was actually there for the... Um, sentencing of the female of the yeah. female involved in that, and that's yeah, the female was the bottom girl. Yeah. So the yeah. pimp had the bottom girl was the bottom. So explain the, the difference between the pimp and a bottom, and what's their role, and how does and how does how does that girl become that? Right, because I've never heard that term, the bottom girl. Yeah. Okay, so the bottom is the uh, trafficker, the pimp, main girl, mm-hmm. and so what he um, so a lot of cases the bottom girl um, was once traffic. Okay. Okay, and then she became she became his main girl. Mm-hmm. And then um, he would have her groom the girls. So he will find girls, mm-hmm. and he have uh, um, her groom the girls. Did he? Did and she I, help recruit too? Um, yes, yeah, so he'll have them her recruit as well. So he have the um, bottom girl go find girls as well. Mm-hmm. He'll have see, a as a female too, she has a better chance of getting closer to the children right. or the young, t- young female before yeah, female adults, yeah. they realize so what's going on. So that's yes. just like your yeah. documentary with the, yep. yeah, yep. The, the, the and she was the bottom girl. Yes, yeah, I know we keep saying girls, but uh, um, and boys too. Yeah, boys yeah. as well. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, because there's buyers out there who prefer boys as well, mm-hmm. so they'll look for boys to buy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a sad thing. Just sitting here listening, we're just talking about it like we're, um, you know, looking at it from through through a, a, a glass or something, mm-hmm. and it's happening right now as we're talking. Yeah, I, it's you like know, I can't. You know, you got to get like I chills. can't. I'm super pragmatic about it yeah. for that very reason. Because mm-hmm. when I, I was just on my knees last night about this when i th- stop and think about it mm. I, I i would literally be paralyzed yes, in a fetal position over in the corner mm-hmm. so i just gotta i gotta have emotions about it right. tuck that away and then go do what there is yeah, to do because this is the only way we're going to stop this right. is if we talk we got to talk about the hard stuff mm-hmm. we mm-hmm. have to talk about the difficult stuff and right. i you know and yeah and i want you to f- keep going about the bottom and the mm-hmm. Yeah, and it comes from every home too. And, and whenever I speak to people and, and uh, try to help them, uh, try to help them understand that it's not, um, it's happening to anybody. Like yes. it comes from, uh, um, you think it may just happen in the hood or it happen mm-hmm. just somewhere else, or in, mm-hmm. in a third world country or not here. Uh, I have three cases where it came from upper middle class. Mm-hmm. You know, where the victims, you know, mm-hmm. lived in a nice, really nice, stable home. You know, mm-hmm. um, so it does happen to everybody. But let me go back to the bottom girl. Yeah. So the bottom girl, you know, she used to groom the girls. She used to um, help manage the girls and set mm-hmm. up rooms. So um, one case I worked, well, several cases I worked, where we we actually we actually arrested the bottom girl because the bottom we arrested the bottom girl plus the pimp. Um, we arrested the bottom girl because she was facilitating everything yes. as if the pimp was yes. right. Um, when we interview her. Um, and she worked with us, they always, of course, get a lesser sentence. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, um, sometimes no jail time. It depends on the circumstances. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we do try to work with bottom girl because yes. we do understand that they were once right. yeah. being trafficked. Well, well, you know, and that's what I want. That's one of the questions I want to ask because I think that's, an, uh, again, another one of those misconceptions, right? No, these girls don't prostitute for their drugs. Mm-hmm. They're forced to prostitute because they're on drugs, right? Is, you know, we talk about this. I actually can have compassion for all of that because I can't imagine what someone's life was like mm-hmm. to have them end up that way. Yes, mm-hmm. It's got to be, I, I just can't fathom it. You know, mm-hmm. like, no, there's no book. There's no movie that could actually show mm-hmm. for, have us experience what those people experience that has them buy and sell 
women and children and boys mm-hmm. at the you know just like they would sell yeah. a cup mm-hmm. it's the same thing it's a commodity uh, is, we're going to take a quick commercial we're going to take a break uh, yeah <laughs> keep us locked in wokb 1680 and wokbradio.com imagine this tender goat meat swimming in savory curry Mouth-watering jerk chicken smoked in spices, smothered in a tangy homemade sauce. <laughs> oh, no hungry yet? Then come savor the flavor at B&T Jamaican Jerk Restaurant, located at the Good Homes Plaza. Curry goats, oxtail, tripe and beans, express and lunch specials, and much more. Visit B&T Jamaican Jerk Restaurant on Facebook, or call us at 407-440-4694. Hi, this is Carlene Davis, and guess what? Come August 25, I will be sh- Hey, it's your girl Abigail Hamilton, and you're listening to Noel and Beverly on the Talk It Up Radio Show. Keep it live. And welcome back to the Talk It Up Radio Show. As we said, today is Father's Day, and later on in the show, we're going to open up the phone lines um, for you to call in and give shout outs to your father or someone who played that role in your life. Um, we have a very um, serious topic. It's almost like I feel guilty having this topic on Father's Day, but somehow we've made a commitment to do it and we have to stick to what we're doing. We have to be consistent. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we're hoping that with every show we do, it can bring awareness and also save somebody from, yeah. from being pimped, being trafficked. Mm-hmm. Um, what I think when we had the town hall meeting, the um, attorney Lisa, Lisa Harbour was saying about the, the monetary penalties and some of them sounded really good. Yeah. So there's t- there's two kinds of penalties I yeah. actually want Maurice to talk about. One is the penalties for the pimps, um, and the other one is for the people that are purchasing the the sex, because that's you know that's the other piece too. We got to end the demand in order to end the other. So let's let's so penalties for pimps or traffickers. Penalties for the people that buy. The traffickers. It's, it's, it's life failing, like I said, and it all, all dep- depends on the circumstances of each case, right? But it is a life felon. Um, we get, get, get we got have guys get ten years. We have guys get forty five years. We have people get life sentences. Mm-hmm. So it depends on the circumstance. Like the one I said about the girl mm-hmm. who um, who passed away. Yeah. Uh, you know they got I think it was sixty years in prison. I think yes, it was. they did. Yeah, they um, did. So uh, so penalties for the um, traffickers is very steep. So right? it's a life felon. Yes, it's a life felon for sure. Okay. Uh, the penalties for the Johns. Uh, the, per- the purchasers. I hate that name, John, yeah, because if you're named John, you're... It's, it's yeah, also a so toilet. It toilet. is, exactly. <laughs> well, well, kind of fitting. But, you know, the, the purchasers of sex, because, look, there's women that purchase sex, yeah. too. So yes, yeah, buyers, uh, purchasers. Buyers, yeah, buyers. Yeah, it's crazy how you say it, too, when you're talking about a human being. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but doesn't it, doesn't it make it... Uh, I, I would I would prefer honestly to see no matter what role you play in human trafficking that you get a minimum of ser- sentencing so you don't think oh I can just do this and I'll only be uh, gone for yeah. five or I'll get uh, I get um what do you call it par- what do you call it again parole uh, parole, parole yeah. something yeah, like that parole. Or, yeah you get parole after uh, a period of time so mind. you're for mandatory sentences yes ma'am yeah <laughs> I mean I it, it, it brings to mind that guy who <laughs> th- that guy who killed the four children just the other day oh my gosh you know <laughs> but I'm I'm just saying. You know, monetary needs to be done. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mandatory. Next time you guys go to Washington, I want to go. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Yes. T- t- Pastor, I'm taking the day off. 
Back, back so, to yeah. Um, well, you yeah, know so, what? Hang on a second mm-hmm. before, like, so for so for the buyers. Before we get to buyers, I do want to talk legislation. So don't don't mm. let us forget that. Okay. 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 Back to buyers. What's there? What What's the penalty for someone that purchases sex? Well, have you heard of John School? Mm-hmm. Okay. You guys familiar with John School? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, John School <laughs> is a uh, is a program that the courts had set up for um, buyers. So so if you go and purchase a female, it's a misdemeanor, right? Which it should be a felony, but mm-hmm. But it's a misdemeanor. And one of the probation conditions is for them to go to a John school, which they learn okay. about um, the women that's being sold. So they um, learn learn about what women go through and what are you getting involved, mm-hmm. the uh, mm-hmm. STDs that come on with it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you can get AIDS, you can do this. You know, things can happen to you, bad things can happen to you if you continue on purchasing women. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have that as a uh, stipulation for the... Um, for a buyer. Yes, for a buyer. Um, that's not good enough for me, right? Because when I talk to these victims, um, one of my questions is, do any of them care that you are a minor, right? Do any of them ask, hey, um, which, of course they wouldn't, but mm-hmm. but when you walk through that door, these, you know, these uh, females. Yeah, what crosses friends, your mind yeah, that makes you know. it, that you think it's okay to be doing what you're about to do with a minor? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And um, they look like minors, mm-hmm. you know? Um, mm-hmm. And they said, no, not one guy that came in the room said anything. You know, they didn't ask me my age. Wow. They didn't care. Mm-hmm. You know, they just didn't care. Not one person for as long as they've been doing So every survivor that I have ever um, investigated and dealt with not one time have the buyers um, question their age or anything about them. So they can care less. Mm-hmm. So I feel, you know, if you can care less, and if I can prove that that yeah. you are one of the buyers with this you know child, then I should charge you with human trafficking. Yeah, you're complicit. You know, absolutely. Um, unfortunately, the law would not allow me to do it. Not yeah. yet. Um, yeah. Give us some time, Maurice. <laughs> Give us some time. Yeah. yeah. Well, in in along that same vein is when you you know when you're talking to these buyers and and they don't get what they've done, you know. Where where's that line between just flat out gratification and pedophilia? Yes, uh, they use the excuse that um, that that when she was being sold, you know, the age was eighteen and the age was showing twenty one. So that you know, um, the excuse is, uh, well, you know, she said she was eighteen. So when you question them, they stuck on that. They're like, no, 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 no. She said she's eighteen. She looked like she's eighteen. She looked mm-hmm. like she's twenty one. Mm-hmm. You know. So in their mindset, they are making themselves believe that. So they're justifying yeah. the they're justifying the means. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're gonna wow. have to do a part two. <laughs> we're almost yeah. out of time. No <laughs> we're kidding. Almost out of time. No kidding. Well, we want to. I yeah. want to briefly talk about legislation. Let me let me give the number out, buddy. Yeah, you. please. So um, yeah. So if anybody wants to call, and we do have another question. Yeah. Um. Four zero seven eight nine four six. 80 we want to um encourage you one more time four zero seven eight nine four eight nine four one six eight one zero six eight zero if you want to call it's father's day we want you to call in um if you want to say you know give a shout out to your dad to or call. you know yeah. say something something and nice say something nice about your dad about your dad or the person who played that role um coming up next is the jamming radio show they are in the studios here our 60 minutes look like we got 45 but i i, I just think we got cheated but <laughs> you're so funny <laughs> you know? nice. all right four zero seven eight and four sixteen eighty. also the pine hills walking for peace every friday at 6 p.m at the corner of pine hills and silver star road pine hills walking for peace yes mm-hmm. what is that about in the old winn dixie plaza they they um they just have a meet, have a prayer and they walk, you know. Right. What do you think? Wear a white color or pink? Sh- I think a, a orange color. I forgot what. Color and it's shirt. every Friday. Every Friday. What yes. time? It's brought by the Pine Six. Hills Public Safety Initiative. Yeah. They're six p.m. Peace. Yeah, at six p.m. I love that yes. corner of Pine Hills and Silver Star. What a great idea! And corner of they all wear yeah, the same okay, color. I th- yeah, I forgot what color T-shirt they wear, but it it it, it makes them look like they're uniform. Yeah, yeah. You that's know? awesome. I, I think know. it's white. Yeah, it's really awesome. Um, I so, know do we have any callers wanting to say it's nice things about their dad? Not yet. And um, the, so, the, Maurice, the, is there anything the, nice you want to say about your the, dad? The clock's ticking on them, so they don't call now. This too <laughs> yes, late. Yes, we have two minutes. Yeah, yeah. we have two minutes. Mm-hmm. 
Well, I'm, yeah. Well, my dad is amazing, right? I mean, look at me. He made kind of exactly. <laughs> I came out, of, I came out of, okay. So yeah, you, you, you worked out okay. Yeah, so I just want to close out our Facebook Live part of the show mm -hmm. of just really being thankful for everybody that's watched, thankful for, please share, because Maurice was full of amazing information. I just want to thank you for mm -hmm. stepping on tonight, Maurice. Really appreciate it. And, you know, remember our motto, see something, do something. Call yes. the National Trafficking Hotline. And if it's an immediate danger, you call 911. I've talked to every police officer. I nod your head every law enforcement mm -hmm. they say call 911 because mm -hmm. they're like you, you know don't wait if you see something that somebody's in danger you pick up the phone and right. you call 911 and let's save that child or that adult that's in if trouble if it turns out to be nothing at mm -hmm. least you called exactly you never know. exactly yes. so Maurice any parting words last 30 seconds um, no, we got some time. Um, we I just, do? I just had to talk with um, the, the, the Jammings Radio crew. Uh, oh. We can oh, talk till he plays his music. We can? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Thank you, brother. I love this guy. <laughs> he plays such great music. <laughs> well, yeah, last time you were jamming. I was. I was. <laughs> All right, so we're back. No calls, so we're going to cut cut the phone lines off. We can't take a call. It's too late. Right, okay. so Maurice so, you know, was about so, to yeah. yep. Maurice, oh. closing words, any parting words? Like, what would you want to, you know, what, here, I'll, here I'll, I'll prompt you. What are three things you want to tell parents and how to prevent their kids from being trafficked? Good things. Good. good question. Oh, oh. Um, be involved. Uh, be involved. Stay focused. Don't be scared to um, be a parent. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of parents want to be friends. Mm -hmm. Don't be scared to be a parent. Don't be scared to look at their phone. Check their stuff. Check mm -hmm. their social media. Check mm -hmm. them out. Don't be scared to grab their phone and look through it. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. just be involved and also love them, um, educate them, and don't be scared to be very blunt with them. Yeah, you know, be straightforward. Let them know what's out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and, and as a parent, you have to remember that they're being targeted in every single facet of your life social yep. media at yes, school are, yes. kids are being targeted so don't think they're, they're they're living in a cocoon you know and you don't want access to them so you have to think uh, you have to also educate yourself as a parent too of what's going on out there yeah, yeah. educating yeah you yeah. know what yeah educating yeah. yourself yeah. education uh, um get involved uh do what you do now listening to this and um when human trafficking training come up or meetings come up get involved yeah. in that mm -hmm. and can also anybody share. join the task force um, well, we vet everyone that um, come along the task force. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, I guess I made it. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. yeah, so we vet usually anyone who have anything to, um, who really care and passionate about uh, um, helping out the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people say they want to help, but if I call you at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning yes, and uh, you don't answer your yeah. phone, yeah. if I'm a victim that needs housing, mm -hmm. clothing, shoes, mm -hmm. or food, and you said that you provide that but you do not, mm -hmm. then we have an issue. Yeah. So yep. so um, if you do uh, want to get involved you know, in task force and helping out, just please make sure you can stay to your word and help. Mm -hmm. And um, and if they want to do that, what's is, does the task force have a website? Uh, no, we do not have a website yet. Okay. Um, All we, right. We just do Seminole County um, um, Sheriff's Office. Seminole County Sheriff's Office. Okay, good. So, what's the Seminole County Sheriff's website? Uh, Seminole County uh, Seminole County Sheriff Office uh, dot org. Org or gov? I don't gov. know. Well, look, gov. Sorry, gov. We have we have Google. That's you. People are smart. <laughs> they can look it up, right? Yeah. So, and seriously, if you want to be involved. You just, you know, take an action. And, and even if something as simple as sharing these posts can save a life. I yes. can't tell you how many people have, you know, come back around from, you know, three or four people away from me mm -hmm. thanking us for, for the conversations that we right, have. And right. I just really want to shout out to both Noel and Beverly and the Talk It Up radio show and, and you know, the team at WOKB because this is happening because they said you wanted it to and they're making it happen right. so mm -hmm. shout out to and you also guys. I want us to, I want to um, let our audience know that our first town hall meeting at the Metro of the Nazarene was so so powerful I oh, had yeah. so many positive um, comments when you're doing the next one when you do the next one mm -hmm. we're happy to say that we're we got confirmation from another church Oh um, yeah, we got a confirmation. Another yeah, church. We're gonna do another town um, hall. down in South Orlando. Mm -hmm. um, we're waiting um, on a second um, piece of information know. before we make it public, but it's gonna be sometime in August. Yep. And Orlando. we're really, you know, all I can say that is that God is in control. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, because the person I spoke to said, "Man, we wanted to do this a long time ago. We should call me earlier." <laughs> you know, so we 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 have to listen to when God asks us to do something, tells us to do something. We just have to listen to the voice. Mm -hmm. We have to pray and ask Him to take control. Yeah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's really, really has been yep. um, one of those honor, show, uh, honor it, and pleasure. No, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, it's a, it's 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 also very um, emotional too. Mm -hmm. You know, when when I hear. 
because when I when I hear that someone is involved with it, like um, um, Deputy Sheriff Maurice Edwards, yes. and oh, um, someone says they know you from the uh, <laughs> Mo, they know him as Mo up there. Um, a friend of mine works in the courthouse. <laughs> yeah, Mo. Yeah, yeah Mo. <laughs> yeah. He does go yeah. by Mo. Does go by Mo. You we, know? you know, he's here officially. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of <laughs> official, not official. They saw whatever. the post on my Facebook page yeah. and said, "Oh, I know him." Aww. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. But um, he's a rock star. Human, human <laughs> trafficking is no is no joke. It's no laughing matter. It's yeah. happening as we speak, yep. mm-hmm. and um, yep. unfortunately, it doesn't stop when we stop no, when we talk when we stop talking. Mm-hmm. But we just want to bring awareness to it. We want to bring awareness to the point yep. where if you see something and you feel something's going on, absolutely, just call nine one one and say, "Hey, I see this child on the corner." You know, it's two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Well, the, you know, we yeah. actually we actually talk about that because yeah. I, I can't tell you how many kids I've seen it. You know, if I'm getting gas at eleven o'clock at night and there's some kids yeah. sitting at the Seven Eleven. I, you know, drive right by, get on my car. I'm like, are you okay? What do you, you know, do you need anything? What do you need? Is, are you, you know, I engage. And even if they say, no, no, I'm fine. It's right. Seven, it's seven o'clock. I still check in. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We got to right. go. Thank you. Okay. Bye yes, guys. Thanks, thanks for, for watching. Have a good week, Please everyone. share. Day, Noel. All right. Say bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Say bye. Father. Happy Father's Day, everybody. Yeah. Happy, happy Father's, Father's Day. Day. It was an awesome show. This has been the Talk to Prater show. We are now turning you to the capable hands of... The jamming vibe. Great job. I don't hear those music. people. <laughs> Good night, everyone. I don't hear the tongue. <laughs> no, I'm going to cut you off over here. Okay, okay.